Hi everybody, today I want to introduce you to the LangChain indexing API. This update is quite huge and very important for real world applications. To understand the benefits, we have to take a look at the current workflow with vector stores. You have your documents, create your embeddings and store everything in the vector store. If the raw data gets updated, you dump the index and create new embeddings. If you've got a lot of documents or frequently have to update your documents, for example, if you index data from a news website, this may get quite expensive. The indexing API lets you keep track of the documents and only update the changed documents without dropping or recreating an index, or if you wouldn't drop the index having outdated vectors in your store. Let's now have a look at how this works with code. And as always, you can follow along by cloning the repository. Link is in the description. Okay, as you can see, I'm in VS Code and this is the repository. We've got multiple files here. The Docker Compose YAML is responsible for creating and hosting our vector store. We use a Postgres database. Here is the Docker file we inherit from Postgres and install some packages. Here we download the PG vector extension and then create the extension in that init SQL script. So we create the extension vector here. So that's then the vector store. And in the code IPython notebook, we've got the code to work with the indexing API. Okay, to make that work, we first have to run docker minus compose up and then the vector store will be downloaded and created. And now we can create our um, vector store collection. So we set up our connection string, we set up the collection name, and then we create the vector store. Here we pass in as docs just an empty list because we won't store any documents with this PG vector from documents method, but we will use the record manager to do so. So we run that and then we've got our new vector store. So, okay, let's first create some documents and I will load this bellavista.txt. This is just a little Q&A for a fictional restaurant. Here we can see the question and the answers and we will load that with the text loader and then split it into multiple documents with the character text splitter. So if we run this, we can see we create our chunks and we want to store that chunks as embeddings in our store. Here you can see we've got seven documents. So first we have to import the SQL record manager. This is currently the only record manager so we have to use a SQL database for creating our record manager, which keeps track of the documents. So this works very well in combination with PG vector because you don't have to create multiple databases. Okay, now we have to set up the record manager and we have to pass in a namespace argument. This is just a string and we pass in here the collection name from the vector database. And very important here, we have to pass in a connection string. So since this is PG vector, we can use the same connection string as for the vector store. So nothing new will be created here. Let's run this. Oh, of course, we first have to import it. And now let's run it. Okay, now we can run the create schema method and this will set up our table. Okay, so let's load the data here again and we'll just take a look at it. As you can see, we've got seven chunks again and this makes use of the document class. The document class has got a page content property and also, we have to scroll a little bit here, has got this metadata attribute. So in the metadata attribute, we've got a dictionary and in the dictionary, we can set up keys. So LangChain will automatically set up this source key and we have to reference that source key in the index function. So we pass the docs to the index function, we pass the record manager and the vector store. Setup is currently set to clean, I will explain in a few seconds what this means. And also we set this source ID key. So this is source because in the metadata we have got this source key. So this will be hashed now and now keep track of changes in the documents. So if you run this here, we can see that we added seven documents to the vector store. If we run it again, we can see that now we have zero documents added this is because in the first run, we created the documents once and in the second run, it identified that the documents are already present in the vector store. So it didn't create new embeddings and we saved some money here. Okay, now we've got this cleanup set to none, but what does this actually do? I will show you in the example I provide you here. 
and we create a new document. So first we update the first document, we will delete the document and we will also append a new document. So now we've got an updated documents list and if you run it again, also with cleanup none, then we can see the following. We can see that five documents were skipped and two documents were added. So despite we deleted the raw documents, they did not get deleted in the vector store. So this is now a little bit out of sync, but this can be intentional if you want to keep track of your old vectors. But I think it's better to use the cleanup incremental method here. So if you run that again, we already added these documents here. So we can just see that we will delete these. So we will delete two documents. And this is because this was updated. So we delete the old vector and this was completely deleted from the documents. So this gets also deleted from the vector store. So every time we update or delete the document, the vector will be deleted as well. For the cleanup method, there is another argument we can set and this is full. So the difference between incremental and full is that full expects this list of documents to be the whole universe of documents you want to store in your vector database. This can be comfortable if you've got a small number of documents, but it's not very helpful if you've got a large number of documents because you don't want to store all of your documents in memory. So if you've got large number of documents, use incremental. If you've got small and often changing documents, then use full if you want to clean up. I will show you what this does when you provide an empty list. So this will actually delete every document in the vector store. So now we've got an empty vector store. So this can be a little bit of hack to actually drop all of your vectors from the vector store. So that's it for the video. I think that new update, the indexing API, is a quite important update for LangChain, especially if you want to create larger scale applications. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Please like the video and subscribe to my channel. See you, bye bye.